What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the only show where wrestling and cosplay collide. This is Too Sweet Converse, hosted by Too Sweet Cosplay. I'm EJV here, here, and I'm with my boy Nico. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm also here with, of course, the the matriarch of this, Steve O. Hello. And then, of course, I'm with our, and then finally, our cosplayer extraordinaire, the one, the only Wild Card. Yo, yo. Hey, everybody. Thank you very much for watching last week's episode, everybody. Uh, thank you for checking it out, liking, subscribing, doing all that good stuff. Uh, we hope you check out this week's uh, episodes of this show and Two Sweet Show. But right now, to lead us into the topics, here is Steve-O. All right, everyone. So we're going to be celebrating 30 years of uh, arguably one of the greatest wrestlers, the GOAT, Chris Jericho. And they did a little uh, celebration on AEW Dynamite. Um, so this guy has had a 30 years in the business, starting back on October 2nd of 1990. The entire episode of uh, Dynamite was devoted with him. So many cameo appearances from friends, families, uh, members, celebrities. We saw Slash from Guns N' Roses, Lars Ulrich from Metallica, Shaquille O'Neal. Ultimo Dragon made an appearance. We also saw Hiroshi Tanahashi, and then uh, Chris Jericho's dad, uh, Ted Irving. He he made an appearance. So, I mean, this guy has a career spanning all over. He's been in ECW, WCW, WWE, um, AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all sorts of that. So, guys, uh, let's hear your thoughts. Uh, give us like uh, one or two of your favorite Chris Jericho. Moments in wrestling, be it a promo, a segment, anything of that like, and then like name like uh, two of your favorite matches. Um, I know there's a, there's a lot we could do a probably a full hour of this, but we're gonna <laughs> kind of narrow it down a little bit just to get things going. Uh, let's start off with a uh, Chris Jericho cosplayer uh, wild card. What what are your some of your favorite matches and moments with Chris Jericho? Hey, wow. Uh... I don't even know where to start with Chris Jericho, man. I mean, it's uh, it, it, he it, he's like the goat. Is is it safe to assume that he's the goat of professional wrestling here, at least currently, right now? I mean, just with what he has done, well, where do you even start? With him? Um, you know, you can go back to, uh, I mean, he, my first exposure to him was really WCW, honestly. Um, uh, you know, just seeing him and just the charisma that he brought. I think I remember there was a segment, and maybe you guys can recollect this, or or, or maybe correct me if I'm inaccurate on this, but uh, he brought out, uh, I think he was in a feud with Dean Malenko at the time, and he had this huge list. Uh, I guess he called himself the man with a thousand and one moves, yeah, because I guess it's just... Man of a thousand and four holds. Or a thousand four holds or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and it's, it's just basically just a take off of... Uh, Dean Malenko, I, and that was really my first exposure to Jericho, but I didn't really pay too much attention to him. Um, and of course, you know, probably one of my favorite moments was when he debuted on Monday Night Raw. Um, I don't recall the date at the top of my head, but it was obviously, uh, you know, it was his uh, illustrious debut in the WWF at the time. Uh, and I thought that the, um, the, the, uh, the way that they presented him was actually really dope because, um, you know, I remember that whole, uh, you know, countdown to the new millennium, the, the clock there. I mean, I'm sure we all remember that there, too. Um, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think anyone had a clue who that was or what that was about. And, like, I mean, as a fan, I was wondering, OK, what the hell was that about? Um, you know, and then when he finally came out, I mean, I was just like I bugged out. I bugged out to the point where I'm just like, oh, my God, it's Chris Jericho. And, you know, and I never really thought he would make it that big in WWF. But, I mean, his career just grew and grew. Um, who could forget about um, the night? He actually became the uh, undisputed champion when he actually defeated The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, I believe, at No Way Out. Not many people could say that they beat those two guys in the same night, um, you know, and, and, and the fact that he's actually still using that or saying that is is pretty legendary right there. Um, I mean, uh, you know, I've had the pleasure of cosplaying Chris Jericho, and uh, it's, it was actually a true honor because, uh, you know, the more that I think about it, the man always finds a way to reinvent himself every single time, no matter how old he is. 
Um, but you know, the fact of this is that, you know, you know, as he gets older, you think that you know, they would slow down. Not in this case, not in his case, actually. I mean, he's, he's going, this is probably one of his strongest runs that I've seen out of him. And, uh, the fact that at his age, he can still go uh, with, uh, some of the, the younger guys who are probably half his age in the ring, um, it's quite impressive. I, uh, you know, there's, there's so much to even say here, but I figured that, uh, you know, I pass it on to uh, the rest of my colleagues here. But I think I, I would like to share one thing about Chris Jericho that I really do enjoy is um, is the fact that, you know, he's able to adapt. He's able to adapt to new style that we see in uh, professional wrestling now it's a little bit more fast paced it's a little bit more athletic there too um you know the fact that you know his age he's able to you know go with guys half his age is it's quite remarkable it's quite impressive and uh you know i i can't wait to see what uh, le champion has in store uh for uh, the rest of his career, I hope he can go for an, at least another decade. And uh, who knows? Maybe he'll come up with something brand new that we don't really realize. Uh, but anyway, that's my spiel on it. Again, I have a lot to say here. Or I could say a lot more about uh, Jericho, but I, I need to pass it on to uh, my colleagues here. Uh, EJV, what, what's your take on uh, Mr. Jericho there? I mean, in all reality, what could I say about the demo god, the million viewer man? That should be on Chris Jericho. That hasn't been said. I mean, the guy is probably, in my opinion, as far as his ability to reinvent himself time and time again, his ability to adapt to any style in the professional wrestling business, he probably, to me, is, is, is in my top, at least my top five or top eight wrestlers of all time because of just that. Not disregarding his wrestling ability and all that, but to me, just because of the way he can switch. He can go from you know, a cocky, arrogant rock star type to being a keeper of a freaking clipboard and pieces of paper, he calls the list, to being the pain maker in New Japan and being violent and more hardcore than he's ever been, to being the demo god. Uh, Jericho, has he's done it all. I mean, he's he holds the record for most Intercontinental Championships in WWE. He's the first ever AEW World Champion, the first ever Undisputed Champion. Uh, he, he created money in the bank for Pete's sakes, a match stick that's been in WWE for the past 15 years. I mean, he's done a lot for this business, and a lot of people sometimes may forget that he's done a lot of firsts and really built, really helped build wrestling on his own back in certain spots. Uh, Jer- Jericho is unreal, you know, it's just as, just as a character and a person. Um, he's He's just... A maverick. Um, Jericho, for me, one of my favorite Jericho moments is a moment we all shared together, all in 2018, when Jericho showed up as Pentagon Jr. and attacked Kenny Omega and set up their uh, encounter at the Jericho Cruise. What a great moment. The building was electric. It was just unreal. The crowd was so loud to see Jericho. Um, and it was just, it was an incredible moment. I remember losing my voice practically at that point during that night. Um, uh, one of my uh, probably one of my other favorite moments, probably my favorite, probably one of my favorite was just the debut of Jericho in Chicago uh, that night, in 1999, um, when he and The Rock had that it, that famous uh, battle, and it was just incredible to see Jericho go go uh, mic to mic, word for word with The Rock, and he proved that he was one of the best talkers in the business just on that just on that alone that he could. Stand toe to toe with at many people's opinion, the best talker, best promo guy in the business at that time. Now, for favorite matches, that's tough. Um, I have to go with one of my personal favorites is the ladder match with him and Shawn Michaels. I believe in 2008 or 2009, it was uh, it was one of it was one of my favorite matches uh, when they're at the top of the ladder and they were battling, and it was just an amazing, amazing, amazing encounter. And then another one I have to pick is uh, Jericho versus Omega at the Tokyo Dome. Because that match, to me, I think was kind of the precursor to what All In would do and help bring AEW to fruition. Because that brought so many eyes to not only New Japan, but it brought so many eyes to a to product outside of the WWE bubble. And uh, so many brought more subscribers to New Japan, more buy rates for the, for the event itself. 
Um, I thought that um, they had the biggest attendance at the Tokyo Dome in like 10 years at that point. And it was all thanks to the promotion of one Chris Jericho. And uh, I'll just end it with this, man. Whether he's the champion, he's the sexy beast, hey, man. million dollar man, another wrestler like Chris Jericho. And uh, that's my uh, take on that. On the only Nico. Nico, go right ahead, my friend. Yeah, all right, guys. Um, Chris Jericho, to me, um, he's probably the closest thing we have in this generation to a Ric Flair. And what I mean by that is, from a longevity uh, standpoint, whether you like uh, Chris Jericho or not, whether you're a fan of his work, whether you're a fan of uh, what he's doing right now in AEW um, or not, for me, Chris Jericho was the first uh, quote-unquote heel or bad guy uh, that made me cheer for him. And it was really hard because um, he was going against Goldberg, who to me as a little kid uh, was one of my favorites growing up. Um, so to have Jericho, when he was feuding with Goldberg in um, WCW, do a parody of uh, having the two uh, fat guys as his security guards and, like, going the wrong way and, like, making fun of Goldberg's entrance, that actually made me laugh. And I'm not supposed... And as a little kid, I'm not supposed to laugh at the bad guy. I'm supposed to want the bad guy to get his ass kicked uh, and get killed every single night. Um, but that made me laugh, and that made me, you know, pop as a young fan. And then August 9th, 1999, the day of the new millennium, I was actually in the building in the Allstate Arena for that debut... That was the first time I got to witness the whole idea or the whole concept of wrestling fans being smart enough to know that they were witnessing something special. And what I mean by that is, is nowadays, in today's modern wrestling, we hear, oh, this guy might be going to WWE, this guy might be going to AEW, this person might be going there. We hear that on the internet. Back in the day... We only heard about that unless you read um, certain magazines or if you saw a small section of the sports section in your local newspaper um, that it would kind of hint at it. I was in the arena for that episode of Monday Night Raw in August of 1999 and people already had uh, Chris Jericho signs. You know, Raw is Jericho, like, um, which was a parody to his... Uh, you know, nitro themed shirt. And I thought, wait, why do people have a sign for a guy who's in WCW here at a WWE show? I don't get it. But then when I saw Chris Jericho actually appear at the strike of the new millennium, I thought, wow, okay, this is pretty cool. Um, so for me, I thought that was unique. Um, favorite Chris Jericho match? Um, I don't know, probably um, maybe... WrestleMania 28 with Punk, uh, only because that was the first time I got to see him uh, wrestle live uh, in person, as he didn't wrestle on August 9th. Um, but I was there. Uh, you guys saw my Facebook or Instagram. I talked about briefly meeting Chris Jericho. Um, I snuck on the guardrail to meet Chris Jericho um, for uh, to get a quick autograph. Long story short, he saw me, said hi to me. Um, threw my pin back in my face. It hit me in the eye, and I was blind for the remainder of the day. I was blinded by the sight of Jericho, man. I couldn't see. Um, so that that was my quick uh, encounter with Jericho. Uh, the autograph is on my personal Facebook page. I'll throw it on the C Sweet Cosplay uh, page later on. Um, another favorite Jericho match of mine or memory? Probably, um, I know you guys talked about All In. Uh, already, but probably uh, back in February at uh, Revolution when we were all singing Judas. Andy has the video of him and I beautifully singing Judas on perfect key and pitch. Uh, 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 well, well, well I, we say that in air quotes here, but yes, yeah, I digress. I sounded fantastic. I don't know about you. I sounded absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. If you sounded fantastic, I, I, I should get an award from what my voice sounded like there. 
Right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, Chris Jericho, I definitely consider him to be one of the greatest of all time. Definitely the greatest of our generation in regards to uh, longevity. Constantly reinventing himself uh, with different ideas, whether it's the leader of the new millennium, um, you know, the, the, the person to save the world uh, as we know it, the second coming of Y2J, to now Le Champion, to the Demo God, uh, you know, everything this man touches turns to gold. So uh, thank you, Chris Jericho, for your contributions uh, to, from WWE to ECW to Smoky Mountain Wrestling. A lot of people forget about Smoky Mountain. Um to did he also wrestle in uh in uh, Stampede Wrestling in Canada? Didn't he also wrestle there? Uh no, Stampede closed uh before he could wrestle in Stampede. Okay. Okay, I wasn't sure. But I know I know he did Smoky Mountain uh with Landstorm and uh the Throw Seekers. Um But yeah, Chris Jericho, honest to God man, just thank you for your contributions to wrestling and to the wrestling business as a whole. All right, so I'll give my uh, perspective of uh, Jericho. First match I saw him, um, this was like uh, way back in the 90s, if you will, where there's VHS players. A buddy of mine got a recording of uh, WCW sold out 1998. He had a match with uh, Chris, G- or sorry, he had a match with uh, Rey Mysterio Jr. And I thought that was awesome. Um, I, and I believe this is the correct uh, pay per view, but like the second he beat. Uh, Ray, like he did the lion tame, like Ray was about to do a uh, hurricanrana to him off the top rope. He just crashes Ray down onto the ground, delivers the lion tamer, end of match. And they're like, hey, let's let's give uh, Ray some cheers here. Uh, come on, cheer him. Don't boo me. Don't boo me. And then he just beats the crap out of Ray Mysterio. I, I was like, this guy's hilarious. And then later on, he brings Ralphus to WCW. I thought that was absolutely hilarious him and ralph is together i mean i can go through a lot of stuff they've done in wcw together i mean he talked about like his call out to goldberg that was pretty awesome i i really like that but uh other favorite moments included is him of course winning the undisputed championship in wwe defeating both stone cold steve austin as well as the rock his debut in chicago that was amazing. I wasn't there for it. I was so mad that I couldn't make it to that Raw as a kid. I was really wishing I could be there, especially after watching it live on TV. I was like, no, I could have been there. <laughs> but it's all good. Um, like I said, um, his views with Shawn Michaels in the mid-2000s. Those were absolutely amazing. He had a great match with him at Backlash uh, 2008. And uh, like EJV mentioned, he had a good uh, ladder match with him. I want to say, I I can't remember the exact pay-per-view. I want to say it was Armageddon, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. Another match, uh, this guy, I guess you can't really talk about him too much, but if you just want to ignore, you know, his terrible accolades, his ladder match with Chris Benoit at the Royal Rumble, incredible match, seeing him do the the walls of Jericho through the ladder to uh, Chris Benoit, that was pretty freaking crazy. I couldn't believe that. Um... I mean, I could go through a lot, but I'm going to kind of wrap it up a bit. But another favorite moment, a more modern moment in the WWE, the Festival of Friendship, him and KO were gold together. Absolutely hilarious stuff. And just seeing that in uh, the book of KO, Jericho is on his list. (laughs) Absolutely hilarious. It's a shame, like, their WrestleMania match didn't get, like, a better – I mean, it had a good build, mind you, but the position of the match and Jericho later has admitted that that was kind of what triggered him to kind of finally leave the WWE, if you will. Um, so that's pretty much my take. So, um, he's an amazing guy. He always tries to put over talent, always tries to be creative, be funny. Um, he's really helping out AEW a lot as the first AEW champion. He's doing great. He's helped trying to get guys like Orange Cassidy over. Can't say enough good things about Chris Jericho. I appreciate his accolades, and I look to his many more of them to come. And, yeah, those segments on Dynamite were gold um, last night. So that's pretty much all I got to say about um, the, the demo god, if you will. So 
Moving on to another moment on uh, AEW Dynamite last night. We're going to be talking about um, Cody Rhodes regaining the TNT Championship. So with that, um, Brody Lee, uh, the champion, defended the title to uh, Cody Rhodes, the TNT Championship, in a brutal dog collar match. It was their Ah. first ever... Speaking of dog... (laughs) It was our first ever dog collar match in AEW history and the first to happen on national TV in 30 years uh, where Cody did end up regaining the TNT championship. And next week he's going to be facing off Orange Cassidy at the AEW one year anniversary show. So if you guys got to watch the match, what do you think of the match? And do you think it was too soon for Cody to gain the title? Um, how about we have uh, Nico start this one off? The match, I, I caught highlights of it. Um, I was very surprised um, that they did it this quick. I honestly thought they would have waited um, till the one-year anniversary show of Dynamite uh, to do Cody versus uh, Brody Lee. I think they could have done a bit of a better uh, build because it almost felt like, okay, we're... Taking this newly minted title that we're supposed to treat very prestigiously off of the guy we wanted to have it to begin with. So he can go film a television show. And I'm not knocking Cody at all. I love Cody. Um, He's been very good to me um, at wrestling shows and at uh, appearances. But it was like, okay, we're taking this off of you so you can go do something non-wrestling related and then you're gonna come right back and we're gonna put it right back on you while the person who has this belt is actually finally getting some momentum um and recovering after the horrible uh booking atrocity that tony khan the young bucks kenny omega um and company have put uh mr Brody lee through in my opinion from a booking standpoint uh, to me, that made no sense. I loved the idea of the way Cody came back uh, with the darker hair, almost like not necessarily going heel, but I was definitely getting a little bit of tweener vibes, maybe Kylo Ren-esque. Like, seriously, when he came back with the red lighting instead of the blue, um, I know that's a Star Wars reference um, on Cody's part. So I immediately was like, oh, my God, it's Kylo Ren. Um, no. Cody Rhodes is not Darth Vader, nor will he ever be that good of a Sith Lord, no matter how uh, much of a bad guy he is. But, um, I digress. To me, it was just, the debut, the return was cool, because you're like, okay, we're going to get the Nightmare family to finally get some revenge on the Dark Order. Okay, awesome. Now we're going to do the main guys, right off the bat, of Cody versus Mr. Brody Lee within, like, two weeks. To me, that should have waited. They could have done Cody versus uh, Mr. Brody Lee at full gear. Or they could have done something where the Nightmare family fights the full Dark Order at full gear. And then they could have did Cody versus Brody Lee for the belt. Or just something different. The dog, car ma- the dog collar match was very cool. Uh, very violent. But I've seen better dog collar matches. Uh, what comes to mind? CM Punk and Raven. In Ring of Honor, um, I believe B.J. Whitmer and um, Austin Aries also had one uh, in ROH. I um, believe uh, uh, Magnum T.A. And, um, and Tully Blanchard had one uh, back in the 80s. Uh, if I'm wrong, somebody please tell me. I'm just trying to go off the top of my head of what I can do with uh, my memory here. Um, the match to me was just fine. It was cool to see Cody get some color. I like that they made Brody Lee take multiple finishes. However, because they put this title on Brody to begin with, the way they did after the fact that he had the belt, to me, it did it did nothing. Like, it's like, okay, you're holding Cody's title till he gets it back, but then we're just going to do it right away. We're not going to really make Cody earn it, if that makes any sense. I don't have a problem with Cody being this champion, but now we're going in the one-year anniversary show, and you're going against the guy you've been trying to build um, as the top new baby face of the company in Orange Cassidy, who to me has not really 
delivered. Um, that's just my opinion. I don't dislike Orange Cassidy. I'm a fan. But to me, he's not a top star yet. To me, I thought the Doc Holler match was good. I thought it was really good. It was violent. It was brutal, like Doc Holler matches are supposed to be. Both men bled. I thought it was really cool. There was some good spots with the chain being used as a weapon and as a tool to help the person gain a leverage advantage. I thought the match was well booked, but the problem I have is the same problem Nico had. I felt like they pulled the trigger too early on this. They could have had a better build, like Nico said as well. Uh, they could have had it stretch out a little bit more. And plus, Brody Lee only had the title for, I think, like seven or eight weeks. It hasn't been long. And to me, I don't know how you could build a credible champion in a short span like that, especially in today, especially today's wrestling world, where championships, especially in other companies, switch so frequently. Uh, to me, I feel like that... Um, I feel like while Cody, I'm, while congratulations to Cody and he did win a hard fought match and all that. To me, I felt like they just pulled it, pulled it, pulled it way too soon. They could have built this, like Eagle said, the full gear. They could have pulled this to the anniversary show next week, which would have made more sense. Uh, but you know, it was it, the match was good. I thought that especially with Greg the Hammer Valentine being in one of the probably the most legendary dog collar match with him and. Uh, Roddy Piper at Starcade 83 um, being in attendance. I thought that was a really cool, nice little touch. Um, having to be there and, and watch the match closely. Um, but, you know, to me, this was a missed opportunity. And I feel like they could have done more, but they didn't. And, unfor- and unfortunately, I don't think, while it was a great match, I don't think th- this helps Brody or Cody in a sense. Um but I feel like this whole thing with Cody acting unfriendly, thinking the fans, I think is going to be something. I think he's going to be a nice little switch and bait, and maybe we'll see that very, very soon. Um, but for, that's my opinion on it. Right now, I'm going to pass it on to the one, the only wild card to give us his take on this. Wild card? All right. So uh, I saw bits of the match. I didn't actually see the whole match there because uh, I was out. Uh, Bouncing between NXT and AEW. Um, but the uh, match looked legit. I mean, it was very hard fought. Hard fought excuse me. And uh, it was very uh, brutal, violent. Didn't really surprise me there. Um, interesting uh, that they decided to take the belt off of uh, Brody Lee. Because honestly, I was actually starting to get used to him being the TNT champion. Um, I kind of felt like that... Uh, you know, much like the rest of my colleagues said, they they kind of pulled the trigger on this too soon. I mean, it was almost like it was almost like Brody Lee was just holding that championship while Cody was off doing other stuff there too. Um, you know, I uh, if, if that was the case, then you know you might as well you should have just had him just keep the title there. I mean, unless they were purposely deciding to put the belt back on Cody t- for something even bigger, which seems to be the case with that little Orange Cassidy cameo there, too. Hint, hint. So, I mean, uh, we don't really know where we're going to go with this here, too. But honestly, I kind of felt like, uh, you know, Brody should have had a a little bit of a longer run at the the TNT title, especially if they wanted to make him a little bit more credible because of the momentum that Dark Order was actually, you know, having, you know, going into this match prior prior to the Dog Collar match. I thought they were actually on uh, some kind of roll there. Um, you know, they were getting this buzz here that I felt like, okay, you know, Brody Lee, the exalted one, TNT champion, you know, we're going to take over AEW, yada, yada. And then he goes and drops the title to Cody. I'm just like, no, I mean, the thing is, I have, I don't really have a problem with that because I'm a huge Cody fan that I am, but I just felt like, you know, I, if it just didn't really make sense to me. So uh, kind of a head scratcher. Um, Anyway, that's my take on it. But either way, congrats to Cody on winning the TNT title again. Um, who knows? We're just going to have to wait and see how this plays out, though, for the most part. Uh, well, that's my take on it. Uh, I think we have uh, Steve-O. I think uh, you got uh, your take on this as well. Yes, yes. And uh, Finley, since you're a dog, what did you think of the dog collar match? All right. Well, anyways, uh, we'll, we'll just get on to my thoughts. Um so I did watch uh, a good portion of the match. I was in between that and uh, the presidential debate, you know, because 
Got to follow those issues, too, but I'd rather be watching the match. Anywho, great match. Uh, very bloody, very brutal. The two of them put on a hell of a match. Yes, it was a nice touch to have Greg the Hammer Valentine uh, come out. I, I love, I was a big fan of Greg back in the day and uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, of course, God rest. Um, I actually have not seen their uh, dog collar match. I'll be honest. Uh, I may have to go find it on the network, though. And try I just to recommend it that one. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to echo my colleagues here. I mean, I did think it was a bit of abrupt change. I thought Brody Lee, being the TNT champion, added some legitimacy to the Dark Order, a group that's often uh, mocked and made fun of. Brody Lee is a good big man wrestler. He's a uh, great talent, definitely carries himself well. He went from being, you know, a lackey to Bray Wyatt, to now kind of leading his own stable of misfits. Um, no disrespect to Cody. He's a great talent, great wrestler. Um, him winning a second championship so soon, though, that's going to draw some comparisons to, like, Jeff Jarrett and Triple H awarding themselves titles. I can see people getting upset about that. And, well, I mean, I think there is some big plan in the grand scheme, as shown with Orange Cassidy. I just think it was too soon. I think maybe they should have uh, had Orange and uh, Brody Lee have a feud. And if they ultimately decide to have Orange be a TNT champion, so be it. That would have been fine him somehow overcoming Brody Lee. But I think that Brody should have had the title at least until full gear. I was actually surprised when I was watching Dynamite. I saw, oh, this match is tonight. I thought it was going to be at the, the one-year anniversary show, or I thought it was going to be at full gear. I was very surprised to see it was taking place. My guess is because of the pre presidential debate, they were like, okay, we got to figure out something to keep this uh, show's ratings going. I think that's part of the plan. So, match itself was fine. Match itself was very good. I just think maybe it, it should have had a different outcome. Or, like the, the other guys said, maybe they could have just waited to have it at full gear or at the one-year anniversary show. That's pretty much my take. And uh, that's pretty much it for this uh, week's show. Uh, great discussion, as always, guys. Um, if you have any thoughts on the dog collar match, any of your favorite Chris Jericho moments on uh, in uh, wrestling, we want to hear them. Make sure you post them in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Two Sweet Cosplay on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Please like and follow us at Two Sweet Cosplay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So while this week we will not be having a cosplayer of the week, we will be showcasing some Chris Jericho cosplayers. And just so you know, uh, if you do want to be a future cosplayer of the week, please submit your stuff to us at Two Sweet Cosplay on Facebook or Instagram, and we would love to see what you have there. Send us your stuff. <laughs> and from all of us at Two Sweet Cosplay, Two Sweet, y'all, and check out this awesome collection of Chris Jericho cosplayers. <laughs>